Whenever there's a new Volkswagen Golf, there's an awful lot of fuss, a load of fanfare, and understandably so. The Golf has been one of the best-selling cars for more than five decades, and the name has stuck. But now, there's a new car from Volkswagen that's arguably just as important as any new Golf, and it's this, the Volkswagen ID3. If the name ID sounds familiar to you, then that's because of the Volkswagen ID-R. The all-electric hill climb monster broke the Pike's Peak record, the Nürburgring Nordschleife record, and set a time of 39.9 seconds at the Festival of Speed, the fastest time in festival history. It was the car that put the ID name on the map. The ID-3, as you can see, is something quite different. The ID-R weighs around 1,100 kilos. The ID3, around 1,800. The IDR has two electric motors. The ID3 has one. The IDR has nearly 700 PS. The ID3 has just over 200. But speed isn't really what the ID3 is about. Maybe one day there'll be an ID3 GTI, but right now, this is something different. This is the start of something new. This isn't the first electric car Volkswagen has made. There have been quite a few, most recently the E-Up and the E-Golf. But this is the first production VW that's been designed from the beginning to be an EV, like the Nissan Leaf or the Honda E. It's delivered to customers net carbon neutral because of changes VW has made to the production process and carbon offset schemes. And it comes out of a factory that has been producing cars for more than 100 years, but now only produces EVs. What's more, the ID3 is being built on a platform that's only for EVs and one that can be modified for longer, wider and more powerful cars in the future. The result is this feels quite different to other Volkswagens. It feels different to the Golf, in the same way the Honda E feels different to the Honda Civic. Unlike the Golf, this was never designed to have a gearbox. So there's no transmission tunnel because the gearbox is actually at the back and all the batteries are under the floor. The result of that is there's loads of space. I was expecting a flat floor, but actually Volkswagen has put in something that looks like a transmission tunnel, but actually it's just a lot of space for things. So you can charge your phone wirelessly. There's space for a couple of drinks. There's space for loads of stuff to be honest. Now because the electric motor is at the back as well as the gearbox, this is rear wheel drive. Hmm. Now I know this car hasn't been built for speed but come on someone please build an ID3 drift car. It's got to be done. So what do you get? There are a number of different trim options and with each you get different toys and features but right now at the ID3's most basic level you have a choice of three battery sizes, 48 kilowatt hour, 58 kilowatt hour, and 77 kilowatt hours. The range varies from under 200 miles to 260 miles and 330 miles respectively. All ID3s have the same electric motor with 204 PS or 150 kilowatts and 310 Newton meters or 229 pounds feet of torque. Although the motor and the gearbox is at the back, there will be more and less powerful motors in the future. This is an ID3 first edition. As the name probably suggests to you, this is one of the first ID3s on the road. Volkswagen are building 30,000 ID3 first editions. It's got a 204 PS electric motor. It's got the 58 kilowatt hour battery and it'll do 0 to 62 miles an hour in 7.3 seconds and go on to a top speed of 99 miles an hour. Just a tiny bit short of 100. You can do an 80% charge in 30 minutes with a 100 kilowatt fast charger. And all ID3 first editions get things like 
heated seats, adaptive cruise control, reversing cameras, parking sensors, all sorts of other good stuff. Now, first of all, the performance. How does it feel? How does it drive? Off the line, you get that instant kick of torque, and then you can feel it. Once the motor reaches a certain RPM, the torque curve flattens out. The acceleration is still steady. You are still accelerating, but you can feel it doesn't have that same urgency that you get right off the line. It isn't slow. Fast, no, but it's no slouch. I think a fair few people would be surprised at how much pace it's got. The gearbox, as I said, it's a single speed unit and you control it all with a little rocker up here on the dashboard. So you've got reverse, neutral, drive and then B for brake. So that's when you get more regenerative braking. So if I press it now, I'm slowing down more. Put it back into D and away we go. The ride quality is good, it's very comfortable, it feels a little firm. You can feel that all of the weight of the car is deep down in the chassis, but it's very comfortable. Everything about the way it drives, its dynamics, is very well sorted. It's what you'd expect from a Volkswagen, really. Do you notice that it's rear-wheel drive? No, 99.9% .9 of the time, you really don't feel it. When it's wet and you accelerate hard, or if you've got a bit of steering lock on, you accelerate hard, yes, then you can feel one of the wheels start to slip, but the traction control and stability control and all that shuts it down so fast. You really don't feel it. You don't really notice it. So as much as I would love this to be a little drift weapon, in the same way that we all hoped that the Honda E would be a little drift weapon, it isn't. But I quite like that it's rear wheel drive all the same. And VW is very proud of the fact that the electric motor and the gearbox apparently will fit in a gym bag and weighs 90 kilos. Now what about everything else? The tech, the EV gimmicks? Well actually, compared to the Honda E, which was the last small electric car I drove, I know they're different sizes, but that was the last small car I drove, there's less novelty in this. There's less frippery. Now, I'm not knocking the Honda E, don't get me wrong. With the Honda E, you've got screens and cameras rather than mirrors. You've got door-to-door -door dashboard screens, whereas in this, you've just got a 10-inch central display. You've also got a 5.3-inch display mounted to the wheel as well as the gear selector. So wherever you move the wheel, that is always going to be in the same space in relation to the wheel. Now don't get me wrong, I love the fact that in the Honda E you can plug in your Nintendo and you can play Donkey Kong all day long, but that's not the kind of stuff that makes a car a car. And this feels a bit more grown up, a bit more sensible, a bit less like there are things there for the sake of being there. The ID3 isn't without flaw. At £35,000 with a £3,000 government grant, it's definitely more expensive than the Golf. But even so, with the exception of the Golf GTI, because it's a Golf GTI, between the Golf 8 and the ID3, I find this a more interesting car. I wonder which would be more interesting between Golf 8 GTI and an ID3 GTI. <laughs> 